one is retracting its gear. Here's a sweet little amphibious airplane that is just a load of fun to fly and has been beautifully engineered by a man named Miguel Rosario from Brazil. Yep. Well, it's in a pusher configuration as well. It is in a pusher configuration. That's pretty common for seaplanes because uh, you uh, putting a, a forward tractor engine to the airplane makes it a little more problematical of how you're going to mount an engine there and have the prop spinning free. So on, especially on these lighter airplanes, it's really a nice way to handle it to put the prop in the engine facing aft. That is a pusher configuration. And uh, that way you get the uh, fuselage of the airplane that can kind of protect the prop. You get water spray, of course, around any amphibious aircraft in any operation. And you don't want to get water into the prop, so this is a good way to protect it. Now, what type of construction you used in this airplane? This one is an all uh, carbon fiber uh, composite uh, body to the airplane, the fuselage of the airplane, and carried all the way back through the tail surfaces. The wings, as you can see, are fabric. And the control surfaces are fabric keeps the weight of this airplane down very low. This is one of the lightest amphibians I ever came across when it was first introduced to the American market. It was only 1,144 pounds. And as you can see, at normal height, it's, it's only about chest high. It seems like a tiny little airplane, but in fact, there's a lot of room inside this one. We'll have to go have a look at the interior. So this is quite a spacious cabin they've got here. Isn't this something, Dave? It's uh, It looks to me like the inside of a power speedboat, and I think that's kind of appropriate, it being a seaplane and all. Uh, just a lovely interior, and it, again, it looks small, and the entry to it is beautiful. You can just step up and put your foot inside the floor of the airplane and stand in the airplane, stand upright in it, and sit down gracefully into it. You don't have to sort of plop your way in like you do on some airplanes. Also, if you can get your camera down low enough here, it's got a neat little overhead panel here where there's a lot of, you can't see them too well, but there's a lot of switches and so forth here that keep those switches from keeping out of the way from occupants bumping up against them. You notice there's none along the panel here, but it also keeps them away from the water, which is good for electrical components in a seaplane. What kind of control systems used on this airplane? This one uses a center stick, as you can see. Uh, just a single control in the center with rudder pedals on each side. And of course, nice side-by-side -side seating with really comfortable looking seats. And he's got them all nicely protected because this one's awaiting a brand new owner. And if they wanted more information on it, you would go to? This one would be at cmaxusa.com. And do you have a flight report on it as well, Dan? I have done a flight report on it. We'll be posting it to my website very soon. So you can find that in the next few weeks here at uh, bydanjohnson.com. That's bydanjohnson.com.